What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over the X-Men, but now it's time for us to jump back over to good old X-Factor. Now remember, by this point in Marvel Comics, X-Factor had completely changed because the original X-Factor was the original five X-Men coming together to try to carry on Charles Xavier's dream because they felt like the X-Men at that time Time was not actually properly doing that and so after you had the original x-factor team rejoin the x-men it left room for new characters to kind of replace them and also give us a new direction with that team and so when it comes to this x-factor they work for the american government because the government is trying to build relations between the mutant race and the actual government of America. And so this X-Factor team being led by Havoc, Alex Summers, is going on different missions given to them by the government. Now today's video, we're going to cover a three-part story arc that takes place in issues number 79, 80, and 81. We do see our heroes being introduced to not really a new character in Marvel Comics, but new for them because this character so far only fought against Wolverine and that's really it. Now, the opening pages to issue number 79 is going to be actually one of the two issues our heroes are going to have to handle in this three-part story arc, where we do pick up with a elderly couple. Now, the wife of the couple, she goes into the living room to see what's taking her husband so long to come to bed, except when she goes over to the living room, she finds that her husband is dead, but also there is a mysterious woman outside the house who was looking in the window watching the man just laying there dead on his couch but now we can actually jump over to X Factor properly where we do see our heroes just having a good time relaxing but also this section is kind of used to give us some comedy in the book because you do have Jamie Maddox trying to play the piano and unfortunately he actually sucks at it. Now Quicksilver, he believes that he's actually a better piano player. And so you actually have Quicksilver push Jamie off to show everyone that he can play the piano. Now at first, he actually sucks, but then after a while, he's able to learn how to properly play the piano because he has heard Black Bolt, of course, the king to the Inhumans, play different songs every time Quicksilver had hung out his ex-wife, Chris. Crystal. But either way, once he's able to learn how to play the piano, he's able to play a beautiful song for his entire team. Now, I want to jump back over to the mysterious killer we have in this book, and her name is Agony. Now, that's her last name. We're going to learn her actual mutant name here in a moment, but we actually see her on the run because you did have that older lady tell the police that, hey, I found my husband, he's dead, and I saw her looking through our window. And so you have police trying their best to actually capture her, except when they try to get close to her, she begins to play music. And when she does, most of the officers around her are kind of put in some kind of trance. And so it's kind of like, okay, does she have the ability to play music and put people under her spell in some kind of way? Now, for our heroes, they do get word about what's happening over in that city involving that mutant. Now, they don't send the entire team over there. They only send really Quicksilver and also Jamie Maddox to go over there to figure out what is exactly going on with that mutant and what is she doing inside that city. Now, you do have Quicksilver and also Jamie arrive over in the city. Now, when they do arrive there, they're kind of being confronted by people who already hate mutants. And so once they got word that there was a mutant in their city who is causing problems like killing people, they got even more upset. And really, they were putting pressure on the police, wondering what are you guys gonna do with this mutant who's just running around and killing off people one by one. But also, 
why is she even here? Now, once you have Quicksilver and also when Jamie arrive, they're also being confronted by hatred as well. Now, here's the big thing. You see, you have Jamie trying to calm everyone down because they all need to work together if they're going to find the mutant and actually stop the mutant. But for Quicksilver, he does get upset with Jamie because to him, he said, listen, those people right there, they hate us. They hate our kind. And what I saw was you trying to please them. And that really did upset me. Instead of pleasing them, you should have went after them, gave them the riot act because what they're saying about us is completely wrong. Now, for a brief moment, we actually have to jump over to Polaris. And reason why, because this is going to set up the second problem our heroes are actually going to go through. You see, you have Polaris out there just shopping in Washington, D.C., trying to find a good outfit to wear for her anniversary date with Havoc. Except, while walking around, she is then punched from behind by a mysterious person that tells her, you should not protect Marilyn Maycroft. Now that name is going to be really important in later chapters, but for Polaris, that one single punch did a lot of damage to her face and completely knocking her out. But now we can jump back over to Quicksilver and also Jamie. Now, this is where we begin to learn the actual name of the mutant in this story arc. And her name is Rhapsody. Now, Rhapsody's real name is Rachel Argosy. Now, for Rachel, she has the mutant ability where once she's able to play music, she gets a range of different kinds of powers. Now, in this story arc, really all story arcs, she only has two kind of powers. The first is being able to fly but the other one being able to play with people's emotions being able to control their minds now we do learn that apparently she is a late bloomer and what i mean is that usually for mutants when it comes to their powers manifesting it usually happens when they go through puberty but the problem for her was well it came when she was only 20 when she was a teacher and so you did have the school she was at kind of freak out with the idea of her being a mutant but once her powers came out out and again once she was able to play music she was able to gain different kinds of powers so now we know her origin now while you have Quicksilver, Jamie, and few other members of the government of this city trying to work together on how they're going to bring her down, you have our heroes get word that she's actually nearby, and once again, she's playing music. And of course, she's having different kinds of powers being shown to the public. And so you have our heroes rush over to hopefully stop her. Now, once you do have our two heroes actually arrive at the scene where Rhapsody is at, you do have our heroes trying their best to stop her. Now, I want to shift our focus onto Jamie. Here's the reason why. Because while you have Jamie trying his best to go after her and actually stop her, well, when she plays music, like I said earlier, she's able to play with people's emotions, play with their minds. And so what we are currently seeing is Jamie being forced to fall in love with her. And with him falling in love with her, well, he's no longer trying to pursue her, no longer trying to bring her down. Actually, he is pursuing her, but not in the way of trying to stop her and bring her in for the crimes that she had committed. Instead, it's really more of him trying to get with her. He's in love with her. Now, luckily for Jamie, Quicksilver was nearby to just jump in the air, grab her, take her down and say, cool, everything is handled. Hey, Jamie, snap the heck out of it. Now, I want to jump back over to the base of X Factor for the ending of the first chapter because we do learn the team does have another mission to actually handle. Now, of course, you're not going to have Quicksilver, nor Jamie, nor Polaris for this mission, but you do have Havoc find out that the team must protect a young woman known as Marilyn Maycroft. Now remember, Marilyn Maycroft is the same name we heard earlier when it came to Polaris just out there shopping and she was hit from behind by a mysterious character who told her, hey, 
you should not protect this person at all. And that person just left after knocking out Polaris. Now, Havoc is learning this from Val Cooper. Now, remember, Val Cooper is in charge of X Factor. With the team being a government team, you need somebody from the government to kind of help run everything. Now, with all that being said, once you have Havoc learn the actual name of the person they have to protect, we learned that Marilyn actually used to work for a group known as the Hellbells. Now the Hellbells used to work for the cartel and apparently for Marilyn, she wants to testify against the cartel to bring some of them down. And so for the government, she needs to be protected because she is perfectly able to bring down a huge portion of the cartel. But once you have Havoc learn everything, that is when you have Wolfbane walk into the room to inform both Val Cooper and also Havoc that Polaris has been attacked. Now, as we jump into X Factor issue number 80, we really continue the whole idea that there is something wrong with Wolfbane. Let me explain. You see, ever since Peter David had taken over the actual X Factor title and brought in a new team, one of the things he did establish is that something is different about Wolfbane. The way she's acting, the way she's thinking, and really, we saw her being kind of weird towards Alex Summers as well. And so, in the opening pages of X Factor issue number 80, we actually see Wolfbane having this weird dream where her, Alex, and also Polaris are kind of like big time partiers, having a good time at some party at her place or possibly somewhere else. But in the middle of the party, they're then attacked by the brood. Now, this could be a hint the brood may have done something to her. We have no idea just yet. But then out of nowhere, she is woken up by Val Cooper. And once she is woken up, we do see that X Factor is currently at the hospital checking in on Polaris. And Polaris is going to be out for this mission because her jaw was almost completely broken. Like they had a lot of things for her to fix her jaw, but she is able to tell the heroes what happened to her. But then you have our heroes realize that Whoever attacked her for some reason does not want our heroes to protect Marilyn, the person they were just assigned to protect who could possibly help the government bring down a big portion of the cartel. And so now our heroes are wondering who attacked Polaris and what is their deal with Marilyn. But you do have our heroes kind of fill in the blanks for Polaris, but it's really more information we already know about. Now let's not forget that Jamie and also Quicksilver are not there because they're handling a different problem, the whole Rhapsody problem. And so you have our two heroes still there because for Jamie, let's not forget, at the end of the last chapter, she was able to play music around him. And when she did that, she was able to get into his mind to control his emotions. He began to fall in love with her. And so because of that, he now kind of believes that him and Quicksilver have to help her out because one, she is a mutant, but two, he kind of feels like there's possibly more to the actual crime. What if she's actually innocent? And really, the way she is talking to Jamie and other people, she's not making it seem like, yeah, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm actually innocent. Like, you guys need to check in on the entire scene here because in reality, I could have been framed. But skipping back over to the Hellbell situation, we do see the other members of the Hellbells getting close to finding Marilyn, where we actually pick up with another member of their group, where they were able to get information from one of their informants. And after they're able to get that information of where they can find Marilyn, you didn't have them, well, kill off that informant to make sure that he does not warn Marilyn that they're getting close to finding her. But we do know by this point, she is being protected by X Factor. Now, I want to skip back over to Rhapsody because while she's in prison waiting for Quicksilver, but also Jamie to find a way to actually save her from being thrown in jail for a very long time, you do have one of the guards at her prison begin to play music. And again, 
once music is played near her, she's able to use that as a way to open up one of her abilities to kind of help her get out of tight situations. So it does seem like she was able to take the sound of music and use it as a invisible cord to kind of put the guard in a chokehold or possibly go ahead and kill off the guard. But it kind of shows that there is something wrong with her, that every time music plays, she kind of does go on this killing path. Now, the rest of this chapter is really more of X Factor, the ones who are there to actually protect Marilyn, be attacked by the Hellbells. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Fresh, have the Hellbells appear before this actual book? No. This is their first appearance ever in Marvel Comics. So over the years, as we go through the X-Men and other titles, we're going to learn more about the actual group. All we know at this point is that Hellbells work for the cartel, and of course they're very upset the idea that Marilyn is trying to rat them out and also their bosses as well. And so it does lead into a huge battle between them and also X Factor. Now, I want to shift our focus over to Strong Guy. Now, guys, remember, Strong Guy has the ability to absorb kinetic energy. And when he does that, he's then able to get stronger. Now, the reason why I want to focus on him, because at the end of this chapter, he does get attacked from behind by a different person. Now, this other person is not really part of the Hellbells. Really, this person's kind of like their mentor. It's a character that goes by the name of Cypher. Sorry, Cyber, not Cypher, Cyber. Now, for Cyber, I don't really want to dive into his actual origin. And the reason why, because thanks to Marvel over the years, they've tried their best to fix the origin of Wolverine. And so for Cyber, his origin is very close to Wolverine's origin. So I want to save his origin story for a later video. All you need to know right now is that his skin is completely covered in adamantium, the same kind of metal as on Wolverine's claws. But you do have Cyber being able to actually poison Strong Guy. And he tells Strong Guy, if you want to be cured of the poison, well, you're going to have to hand over Marilyn. Now, our heroes are not really trying to do that, but if Strong Guy wants to live from the poison, he needs to tell X Factor to give her over to the Hellbells, but also over to Cyber. But as we dive into X Factor issue number 81, we do pick up with our heroes still continuing to fight against the Hellbells. Now for Strong Guy, he's actually calm for right now, but at the same time, he also realized that, well, one of the members of the Hellbells has a fire ability. And the reason why that's such a huge problem is because, well, she's near a boiler. And once she gets close enough to it, well, hey, the entire place, the entire hotel is going to blow up. They're at a hotel trying their best to hide Marilyn there, but unfortunately, the Hellbells and Cyber found out where X Factor was trying to hide her. Anyways, you do have Strong Guy tell Havoc in Wolfbane to get everybody out of the hotel right now. And luckily, they do because right when everyone gets out, bam, the entire hotel does explode. And so it's kind of like, okay, cool. Now, Cyber and the Hellbells, they had disappeared, but they're not done just yet. They still want Marilyn. Now, I want to jump back over to Jamie Maddox and also Quicksilver because we're going to wrap up their whole situation with Rhapsody because you do have Jamie finally realize that one, she's a killer and two, that she has been playing with him because like I said earlier, once music is played around her, she's able to use music to unlock different kinds of powers she may have. Like, for example, controlling someone's mind, playing with their emotions. And so for Jamie, his emotions were being played with. She was able to kind of control him. And so once you have the two characters sit down and actually talk about what 
happened to the old man at the very beginning of this video, she does admit that she kind of did kill him off. Like she was playing music, he loved it, but apparently he loved it too much, quotation marks, and his heart just exploded or his heart just stopped. Now, we can kind of say that that could be one of her other abilities. We don't know yet, but either way, she does admit killing the guy and that Jamie got played and you didn't have quicks of him head back home to Washington, D.C. Now, I want to jump back over to the other members of X Factor. Here's the reason why. So you have the other members of X Factor actually Seeing that strong guy is very upset about being poisoned, which honestly, he has the right to be upset because you are talking about the possibility of actually dying because you were poisoned because your team was assigned to protect somebody else. Either way, for strong guy, he's kind of down with the idea of handing Marilyn over to the Hellbells because to him, he's all like, what's the point? She is a drug dealer or a drug pusher. She may have stopped, but hey, guess what? We don't know that sooner or later down the road, she might go back into that role. But it's also him saying, even if we do protect her, even if we are able to possibly find antidote to kind of save my life, what happens after we do save her? Because there's still other people out there who are selling drugs. There's still other people out there who are able to push the drugs around the world. Now for Havoc, he also takes a poison as well that's very similar to Strong Guy to kind of say, listen, Val Cooper was able to find a doctor who was able to make an antidote to help you out. I took the poison to show you that even though I understand why you're freaking out, you have to understand why we're doing this for. But you also have to trust the doctor here who has a cure for your poison. But also you must realize we have to do the right thing. And the right thing is to protect uh, Marilyn from the Hellbells and take them down, including Cyber. Now for Peter David, he does a great job in setting everything up to come down the road. Let me explain. So we jump over to a ship that is arriving into America. Now this ship was not clear to actually dock in America. And really, you do have the government forces arrive and say, hey ship, we have no idea where you came from, but you can't come here. Like you did not get all cleared out to dock in America. You must go back into the ocean. But then the ship docks and somebody comes out and his name is Prodigal. Now Prodigal is going to be part of a new group we're going to see here in our next X Factor video. But for right now, all we know is that him and his people had apparently left a country and they were trying to find a new country to call home. But the problem was though, four other countries had told them, no, you cannot stay here. Like, go ahead and leave. And so they were kind of hoping to come to America and call America their new home. Now, the rest of the book is really more of our heroes fighting against the Hellbells and also Cyber. Now, for Cyber and Hellbells, they truly believe that there should be okay because they believe that Strong Guy is still poisoned. They have no idea that Strong Guy was able to find a cure to get rid of the poison. And so, when they do arrive at first, they kind of pretend that he is still poisoned. But then in the middle of the fight, they do reveal that no, he is perfectly okay. And you have X Factor being able to take down Cyber, but to also take down the Hellbells. Now, this wraps up this three part story arc, but for X Factor, the job is not done yet, of course, because they are a government team. Sooner or later, they're going to have another mission they're going to have to handle. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.